Well, you're back with Power Women. We're here with renowned architect Nela de Souza. Um, we've had a really interesting chat. And Nela, actually, you were telling me the earlier, uh, you know, before we went into a break, how you were in San Francisco and how you were made an honorary fellow uh, by the American Architects Association. Tell us a little bit more about that because, I mean, you know, it's such a fabulous accolade to have, really. Mm. How, tell us a little bit more about it. Well, me, Nolly. I would reckon that uh, 1st May 2009 was the greatest day in my life. Wow. Okay. The investiture ceremony was at the Grace Cathedral, a wow. very old cathedral, yeah. which was built, which had history. Yeah, hallowed ground. <laughs> Absolutely. And you know, ushered by a, a past president of the institute. Wow. <laughs> you know, to the altar yeah. where you're conferred the honorary fellowship yeah. by the pre the current president and the chancellor. So I mean, really it was so, I mean, it was absolutely moment. awesome. Awesome. So and yeah. I wish we could, I could do the same in Sri Lanka with yeah. the SLI, the Sri Lanka Institute. Do you think that's something that you might be able to? Oh, let's hope. No. I mean, hope. <laughs> that's the first time I wore sari after a number of months because I had an accident. That's uh, right. As I, I mentioned to you, yeah. I mean, I, I fractured my leg Gosh. in Kerala while photographing. I just missed a step. But you still continued to work, <laughs> yeah, which is, which is pretty amazing. <laughs> a lot of travel. I was invited to uh, the Bangladesh, uh, to, ba to ba Bangladesh. Yeah. And I traveled um, in a plaster cast. Uh. And I was in Nepal climbing all the mountains. Uh. I mean, I was at a slice site. Was Still in your plaster, still yeah, on your plaster cast, yes. So nothing. <laughs> and then I, I was just out of the plaster cast when I went to the US. Yeah. And uh, there were lots of things that I did. I mean, there was no, I mean, I had, couldn't say no to anything. So but once again, obst every obstacle is a challenge. Absolutely. And and use that. Interesting year yeah. for you. Huh? It's just been a bit of a whirlwind. Yeah, yeah, it has been, you know, ups and downs economically. I think we are suffering, all our lives are suffering yeah. with the economic downturn. But as much as we are very happy about the victory yeah. uh, of the war, I mean, economically, I think we are all in the doldrum. Uh, things will uh, let's pick hope up. We're <laughs> up. So when you're not being given all these fabulous accolades, flying all over the world to be part of architects, exhibitions, com competitions, conventions. What do you do in your spare time? What do you like to do? How do Once you relax? Once again, as I mentioned, I mean, uh, my maternal side, yeah. which was music. Yeah. I'm a hi-fi enthusiast, so I get myself locked inside my downstairs room, which yeah. is, uh, which is uh, basically uh, soundproof. Right. And I uh, listen to music. Yeah. And I love chamber music. Okay. And uh, opera. Right. You in fact I trained, right, as a mezzo soprano? Uh, yes. Some time ago. Yeah. Yes. So do you still occasionally? I mean. Once again, I mean, these are two things. You know, when you go into the music, you do have regrets that yeah. you've not persuaded. You know, pursued that. Yeah. Uh, side. Of uh, what do you call it? Your uh, talent, uh, your ability. Of, uh, but um, you can't do everything in life. We've got a little surprise for you. We have this thing, um, it's called a confession cam, and we've oh actually <laughs> <laughs> we've actually got um, your sister and another friend who have um, some lovely things to say about you. So why don't we take a quick look at that? Okay. <laughs> for you. She's a person who is, you know, if she has problems in life, she doesn't mope over it or, you know, feel self-pity because, as you know, I mean, then her marriage failed after she had two sons. But, uh, you know, she took off from there and went into architecture and... So let's 
I think is a very positive aspect of her character. You see that uh, you know another person would have been, you know, think okay, you know, I'm burdened with all these. What do I do? And you know, moping about it. But uh, she's able to, you know, face challenges and take it on from there onwards without, you know, wallowing in the problems uh, that you face. More or less the same. That same uh, sunny person who took. Tried and she sort of never sort of nursed grudges, you know. Even in school, I mean, she was known for getting late, you know. So sometimes the children, uh, I mean, the teachers used to uh, punish her or and scold her. But uh, she never sort of uh, held it against them. I mean, you can't say people don't change; they mature, they find experiences that brings in a lot of changes in people's attitudes and so forth. But not in that detrimental ex uh, aspect of, you see. You know, losing your head, getting swollen headed, or something like that, because uh, that is not Nela. You see, I mean, she was a very sunny character, someone who nursed grudges. I mean, she might be aware of what people might, you know, do against her, but uh, she would greet them, deal with them, and get on with uh, her life. I mean, of course, one has to be aware of what is happening around you, but not one of those, you know, cantankerous characters who want to, you know. <laughs> Get uh, her back on them or something like that. You know, she uh, has her own life to get on with, so she's more engrossed in that. Basically, she's very forceful, um, very uh, committed uh, professional. If she sets her mind to anything, she will do it. And she's extremely talented. And that feature, I think, her siblings, uh, siblings haven't got that type of. Um, uh, the cleverness, so the, the ambition, and the, to achieve, and to get right to the top. She first started uh, practicing, uh, or at least working, in my father's office uh, as a draftsman, and uh, then she joined the City School of Architecture, and she was one of the first. Batch and then graduated. My father is the one who set up architectural education in Sri Lanka and got uh, took it to the University of Morotua. And then uh, he also got uh, the RIBA to recognize that uh, course. In the same way, I think Nela has now won all her gold medals and all the accolades, and she has now at the age of uh, 59 decided that it was time for her to uh, give back to the community and she set up this exhibition two weeks ago and uh, she has uh, invited the British architects and she has been successful in uh, getting the City College of uh, Architecture recognized by the Royal Institute of British Architecture. Well, I think um that was lovely to see, especially how proud your sister is of you. <laughs> <laughs> that was quite touching, actually. Uh, um, I need to clarify something. Yeah. We are in the process. Of we guessing. haven't received the recognition. We just commenced the process. Okay. But but I have no doubt that you made will. <laughs> some very good steps towards it. Yeah. Positive steps, steps, but we haven't still got it. And also, the other person was Chandrika, who was, was in school with me. Yeah. And she was amazing. She uh. thought, you know, she sat next to me in class. Yeah. She was all out to do medicine. And I think I might have been such an influence on her yeah. that both these friends of mine who sat on either side of me ended up as architects. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was a fascinating insight to Nayla, and we're going to be back with some more. Uh, we have something we like to call the dreaded 10, which is a rapid oh fire God. question round, uh, where Nayla doesn't get any time to think. The first answer that comes into her mind must be said. Um, so we'll be back with that, and we'll see you after. TV's Power Women. Uh, we're here with fascinating and renowned architect Naila Destroys and we've had a very interesting chat and it's come to that section of the program, the dreaded 
pen. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've got to just answer off the top of your head, first thing that comes into your mind. Uh, and the dreaded 10 is, of course, sponsored exclusively by Pond's Age Miracle, which is this lovely, fabulous skin cream. So, are you ready? Yes. Yeah, I am. Are you nervous? Sure. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right. The first question of the dreaded 10. What makes you laugh out loud? Something exciting. Something exciting. Um, what's your deepest fear? Seeing my own face. <laughs> <laughs> That's your deepest fear. Yeah. <laughs> if there was one person you could go back in time and meet, who would that be? My father. Your father? Yeah. That's, that's lovely, actually. If you were made leader of the nation, <laughs> what would be I'm the great. first thing you would tell it? I wouldn't be. I would <laughs> okay, so there would be nothing that, okay, okay, fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> if a movie were made of your life, who would you like to play the lead role? Just you. Me? Yes. Really? You oh got my an goodness. enchanting smile. Oh, thank you. Something which I noticed. <laughs> thank you so much. Really? didn't expect that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was totally left field, thank you. Um, what annoys you the most? Dishonesty? Yeah. yeah. And, he, and hypocrisy. Yeah. If there was a building that you wish you desi designed, uh, what would it be? Sorry? If I there was a you. building mm -hmm. you wish that you had designed, what building would it be? That has never crossed my never mind. It never crossed my mind okay. to redesign a building. No. Take it as it comes. Take it as it comes. What song describes you the best? I'm not into songs. Okay. <laughs> what piece of music? Is there a piece of music that you think really describes your yes, song? Yes, uh, I like Puckles Bell's Canon quite a bit. I mean, kind of influenced me the earlier year, early years of my life. Your life. Yeah. What makes you lose track of time? I'm always losing track of time. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to get completely, uh, you know, engrossed in something. I lose track of time. time. Always. I'm very bad at it. <laughs> As Chandrika pointed out, time <laughs> is not my savior. <laughs> okay. And the final one. If you could teach something, what would you teach? Huh. I'm not a teacher. You're not a teacher? No. I might be better at examining, but I don't think I'm quite a teacher. Oh, I don't call myself a teacher. teacher. Well, that was it. That was the, the dreaded 10, which I say you did very well at. <laughs> Thank you, Minoli. Thank you, Naila. That was a lot of fun. Were they as dreaded as, as you thought they might be? No, so? I didn't. <laughs> Next to me for a minute. I was like, huh? <laughs> but thank you so much. It's been such a pleasure to have you here today to talk to you. It's honestly been truly a pleasure. Um, and thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule to be with us. I'm sure everyone at, at home really, really, you know, would have appreciated it. And it was just lovely having you here. And um, I can't wait to see what you're going to do next, what project you're going to do next. And um, let's hope. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Piero, thank you so much. It was truly lovely to have you. Thank you, Minoli. It was lovely talking to you. <laughs> you really uh, shot some very inspiring questions. Well, unfortunately, we've come to the end of the program and we have to say um, goodbye to the lovely Naila. It's been a pleasure having her on the show. But um, don't forget, we'll be back again next week with ETV Power Women. Um, so until then, goodbye. Thank you, Minoli. Thank you. Pleasure talking to you. Thank you. Thank you.